now that we've learned a little bit about data storage, uh, we're going to start to look at some new approaches to how we might manage that data storage. Not so much how the data is stored, though we will take a look at that. We want to think about the approach to this and how we separate some of these different parts of our application. So to, to start, uh, we will talk about design patterns. And a design pattern is really just a generally applicable solution to some common problem you might encounter across different software applications. And design patterns are typically not language or platform dependent. They tend to be something that can be applied in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different contexts. And we've seen them work over and over again in software, so we tend to like design patterns because we know we have some record or some experience in how they're actually going to operate. So the first of these to really think about is a DAO pattern, which is a data access, data access object pattern. And basically the idea behind a, a DAO pattern is that we're going to separate the way we store data from the actual objects themselves. So one simple way to do this is to use a module or an object or a set of functions for translation and storage of the data. And the reason why we might do this is because it provides us a little bit of a, a layer between what our actual data storage mechanism is and how the rest of our application operates. And this could be really important if you ever decide that you need to change uh, the, the database layer or you know the data storage layer. You might start off just storing things on a file system and eventually you may move to want to store those in some kind of more sophisticated data storage. You may want to change the database that you're using from one, uh, one provider to another. And all of these, uh, you know, all of these are going to end up with different means of storing your data. But at the end of the day, what you actually want out of that data storage is probably pretty similar. So this pattern allows you to have that that uh, that abstraction from how things are stored to actually how you'll use them in your application. So the simplest way to look at this is. You know, in our, our application so far, we've had a main.py file that's had a lot of our content, and we might also have a data storage.py file. So we're kind of introducing this new idea. And if you think about this, the main.py is going to have the code that serves our pages. It's going to have the web serving code. Uh, you know, and we could think about our data storage code in this data storage.py. So in main.py, if it's calling to this data storage file for, for storing data, it doesn't have to really understand how that is stored. And the data storage file doesn't actually have to have any idea how that data is used. So by separating these two things, now we have a, a data storage file that has a pretty specific purpose and a main.py that has a, a much more specific purpose. Now, we're still going to have business logic and you know the rules that our site has to uh, follow. And, and that's still going to be in the main.py. So we can actually go, we can go a little bit further with that. Uh, you know, we can think about how we have a main.py file. We could also introduce potentially an objects.py. And, and that would allow us to kind of create a centralized set of data that will move around through our application. So if we think about this, we have main.py, which could be used for web serving. We have objects.py, which is going to define all of my application objects. And we have a data storage.py that's going to take those application objects and store them in the data source, as well as retrieve them from the data source as objects. So the names here are arbitrary, but the concepts are really the important thing. We really have a, a file that's responsible for our, our uh, you know, our logic and our, our you know, how our, our code behaves. Then we also have an objects file that represents our data and a data storage file that would represent how we actually save that data to some persistent storage. So, you know, like if we were building a uh, forum site, we might start prefixing our files in this way. Now, this is, you know, there's not really a, a perfect standard for this, but, you know, we're going to use MFS as like just a, a set of examples. So this is one step further. We might have a main.py file that's responsible for that application logic and web serving. We may have an objects file that's going to be responsible for our, our data, and then a data storage file here, MFS data storage, so that we would actually be able to store that data in persistent storage. So here you can see a little bit of an explanation. Uh, the main.py would then use the data storage file to retrieve the objects, uh, but it doesn't actually have any idea what happens. And, and the idea behind this is later you could redefine MFS data storage to take go to the cloud data store or to a database or to some other system. You know, the objects in the middle here, they're going to be defined, but they don't really have any context at all. They could be used for a website. They could be used for an app. They could be used for uh, a command line application. Uh, there's a wide variety of ways. We, you know, they could be a, a desktop, uh, desktop visual application as well. They don't really need to know how they're stored or how they're actually going to be used. So this separates these, uh, these quite a bit. And each one of these files now has a particular purpose. 
Now, we can go even one step further than this, and this is what we often see. This is getting closer to, to something you might see as a large application. And here we have a main.py, and the purpose of that is mostly to be uh, serving HTML. So in this situation, our main.py is the entry point for our application. So this is where we're going to show everything. This is where we're going to uh, render HTML. This is where we're going to get input from the user. But then we have this app, this MFS app.py. And this is where we're going to have our business logic, our, our functions, our, our, obje our objects necessary for processing. Any, any real uh, you know, part of the application, it, the core of the application itself can be defined here. And then our MFS objects is, complete, is focused completely on the data that we need to pass around. And then the data storage file focuses on how that data is stored. So you can see here now this provides a very clear definition of what's happening in each file. Now, the nice thing about this is that uh, your main doesn't actually know anything about how data is stored. It's just moving objects around uh, in, in showing them in, in the user interface. Your application doesn't actually know how things are going to be displayed. Your application could be used to now populate an iOS app and an Android app and a web page and you know any other variety of, uh, of different uh, views into the, the data that we might be using. Uh, the objects is kind of just an independent set of data objects. And then the data storage is, a, is just the way we actually store and persist that data. So the data storage is actually completely oblivious to how the application operates or um, how, uh, how it's actually displayed. Its only job is to take objects and store them and to get those objects back and return them. So this kind of leads into this idea of the separation of concerns. And it's a really useful concept as a design pattern because uh, this allows us to make sure that each part of our application has a very particular and well-defined purpose. So you might often think of your user interface or any of the user interfaces that you build as a view into your application. You might also think of your uh, application as having some kind of data, and that's your model. And then there's the core of your application, the things it does, processing input, transforming that data, uh, modifying data, uh, presenting that information. This is going to be your controller. And this leads us to what we typically call the model view controller pattern in software development. Your view is going to be responsible for showing the user interface and displaying data. Uh, you know, it will take input and send that to the controller. The controller accepts that input, processes, validates input, uh, makes any state changes necessary, uh, presents that information to views, works with the view and the model you know, to, to actually uh, handle what data we're storing and how we want to send that. But the controller is not actually in the business of, of, of doing anything to show data. It's just sending that data back to the view so it can be displayed. And the model, all it really does is represent your objects and you know where we put those. So the nice thing about this is that one controller can manage several views simultaneously. So now, if our application has many different uh, functions, many different features, but we want to show it in a couple of different user interfaces or a couple of different devices, we can define those views independently, and they can call into the controller to get more info or to get that information. Uh, and they don't have to be concerned about anything other than the API or the capabilities in that controller. So that covers a brief overview of some common design patterns. We'll try to use these as we move forward, and hopefully they'll be useful for uh, separating the, the way you build your application and making it a little bit easier to maintain and modify as time goes on. Thank you for watching.